Okay, and we'll talk more about how that operates later, but I just need you now to be able to put that label on there so that we're very specific about what kind of inversion we need in each case. Okay, and we could keep doing this with motives, but I'd like to switch gears and turn to a different piece. Look at the piece by Alban Baird. We have you in there. And this is an early piece, Opus 2, number 2. Let's take a listen to it first. So this is like somebody who's a foreigner who's, who belongs and feels like home is somewhere else and in sleep that's where my dreams take me. I go home. That place is where I dream. Is what I dream of. And you, can you hear the foreignness mm -hmm. in it? I mean it sounds like yeah you're in another place. <laughs> Okay, now take a minute and look at the look at the chord here. I'd like you to think of it. You know, when you do figure bass, you think here's my bass note, and here's some intervals up above that bass note. So I'd like you to get a grasp on this chord, the first the very first chord, I'd like you to give me intervals from the bass all in semitones and then tell me what you find. From the bass up to the next note in the chord? Up to every note in the chord. Just like, you know, if you do, uh, if you write 6-3 for a chord, you're saying there's a sixth above the bass and there's a third above the bass. And there might be an octave up there too. Right? It's a shorthand. 6-3 is a shorthand for intervals above the bass. Do the same kind of thinking for this chord, but measure your intervals all in terms of semitones. So you're very specific. A sixth, you know, it could be major, it could be minor. You don't say. You just say, I want a sixth above the bass. Here I want you to be very specific and measure it all in semitones. Instead of, we've used, we've used up curly braces, what do those mean? Normal form. Could be normal form, but for sure the content is... Mm -hmm. What's that? Integer Yeah, pitch classes using the notation. Good. Uh, if I do this, square brackets, you're dealing with... Set class. Set class intervals. If I do this, you're dealing with... Set type. Set type. So, is there another sort that we could use here? I, I wanted to use this, but then that means something else too, so that's not possible. Yeah. Okay, we'll do squiggles. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. And another squiggle. Okay, so. All right. Now I'd like you to give me a new way of thinking. This is a this is base note is my reference point. That's zero. How far up do I need to go to get this 
D in there. What's that interval, B flat to D? Major third, but I want you to tell Four me. Four semitones. Four semitones, good. Okay, how about B flat to A flat? What's that? It's minor sevenths, but can you turn that into numbers? Five semitones. What is it? Ten. Ten, good. Okay, and then B flat up to F flat. It's a tritone, right? So what's that number? Six, good. The devil's number. Mm -hmm. Six. Where's actually the man's number? <laughs> right? Man's number? Six, six. Okay, so now I've got a fourth, I've got a six, and I've got a tenth above the base. See I'm thinking? Now I'm thinking base is reference, everything else intervals from it. A different way of thinking, but similar, right? We've got a reference, but now we're just saying it's the base now. Do you recognize that pattern right there? Look at that. If you're in C, wait, what chord are we going to If you're in D, and you hear this chord, what is that? B. Now you're, you're thinking D. B flat, D, F flat. Can you spell that as a G sharp? And you have, where's that going to go? practice for our intervals here. Look up when you're done so I know. Two semitones shy of the octave, but go ahead, Chris. Um, Two semitones shy of an octave is. What o'clock? Oh, eight. Mm -hmm. One more time. If I do an octave, I'll come right back to wherever I am. Ten. Let me do it here on E flat. That would be to go all the way around, so yeah, that would be ten. Ten. Yeah, good. Okay, how about here? E flat to A is a tritone, which is? Uh, six. Six. You see how that shows up here? Mm -hmm. E flat to A. Mm -hmm. It's directly across that six. Away. Okay, and then E flat. Wait, did I write the wrong? I need one more note, don't I? I need that G up top, or else I won't have a fourth. Okay, so there's a G in here. Yes, that's there too. But okay, give me the interval up to G from E flat. Four? No, that'd be A flat. Oh wait, fourth. <coughs> Sorry, you mean, yeah. mm -hmm. you're, you're right. Good. 
Yeah, a four. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good. <coughs> See what we're getting? Same deal. Okay, all over again. And I'm just going to give this away, but every single chord is the same. They're all French four threes, but to say French four threes is a little misleading because then you think, well, it's going to resolve. But it never resolves as a French four three. It just keeps going. Now, if every single chord is built off the bass note, and we can think of that as sort of the root, our reference pitch class, do you see how he's moving from chord to chord? Just trace the bass motion. Everything moves with it. Do you see what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. If you always have a fourth, and I'm doing semitones now, fourth, sixth, tenth away, and you just keep moving them in different places, the whole thing, it's not just the bass, but everything's moving with it, right? You keep this pattern and you just go, okay, major third, whole step major third, and you just keep moving it around. And what the bass does, everything else will do too, because they're in lockstep with one another. You follow me there? It's transposition. Okay, so what is the map here? I've got a bunch of chords in a row, call this one um, M, N, O, P, whatever, you know, just give them some label and then say, how do I get between them? Give me labels for these arrows. How am I going to do this? How do I get from the first chord M to the next chord N? <coughs> label those arrows on your score. What we do is we'll put a T there because it's transposition. And then you tell me by what interval. Go ahead and find out. What's the interval? B flat to E flat, E flat to A flat, A flat to D flat. You see a pattern? Mm -hmm. It's always the same. Even D flat to G flat. Mm -hmm. He goes down, but that's the same, right? You could have put that G flat up an octave and you'd have D flat up a, what's the interval? In every case, it's a perfect, put in tone. Perfect fourth. Perfect fourth, which is? Five. Five. So if we're going up, don't do minus seven, although that would do the same. But by convention, we use positive numbers, clock face numbers. Again, you can, miss, you can subtract from 12, or in this case, add 12. So if you happen to go, oh, that's a perfect fifth down, well, that's seven, down seven. You see what's going to happen? <coughs> You're still going to get five. So. Do choose five instead of negative seven, the positive number, the clock face number. Okay? So if I'll write T5 here, what will I write here? T5. 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 In every case, he's moving T5. It's like descending fifths, but with a bunch of French four threes built on top of them. See what's going on? It's like descending fifths, because to go down five, to go down a perfect fifth is to go up a perfect fourth. It's like descending fifth sequence. But the chords are all weird. They're all French four threes. And that creates a really crazy sound, doesn't it? It sounds dreamlike or otherworldly because that's kind of a, well, if you had to characterize a French four three, what kind of collection does that imply? Think of, think of it as a subset. What's the, what collection would this form a natural subset of? Whole tone. The whole tone. There are four notes. I had two, and I've got all six notes of the whole tone. And all I have to do is fill in those two major thirds, those fours. Zero, two, four, six, eight, mm -hmm. ten, and I've got the whole whole tone. So he's talking about sleep and how sleep takes him away from this foreign country back to his homeland, but only in sleep does he get to experience that other place that he longs for. And so we get this this music for that. All right, so what we've done is two transformational graphs, um, one that involved quite a bit of inversion, sometimes precise inversion, where we could actually put a number on it and say, here's how you do it. Sometimes you would change one interval inside the motive, and then we just had to say, it's basically inverted, it's upside down, but I can't really tell you how, because some of them are inverted by this amount and some by another. Now, just now, we took this piece by Berg and said that first phrase, or that first moment, is 
all about transposition by five, T5. And we use that subscript five to say by what interval <coughs> we move from set to set. Two transformational graphs. So that idea now of moving from place to place instead of just giving labels to the things. So it's not just about the things, it's about relationships in time. How do you get from here to there in time? That's our, our main new thing. All right, and we'll do a little bit more of this where you actually get to practice some of it on Monday when we got everybody back. So have a great break. We'll see you. <laughs>